Since smaller dogs are easier to physically control, many people tend to overlook their leash walking manners. Today though, we're gonna focus on teaching a smaller dog how to walk nicely on leash. Click thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, learn how to train your dog big or small, and if you like the videos we make, make a financial contribution to our Patreon campaign. Pick up a copy of my book too. I'll have a link in the description. Now let's learn a little bit more about Bentley. My name is Melissa, and this is my dog Bentley, and he's a Shih Tzu. Bentley is a year and a half. I've had Bentley for six months and he's a rescue. Bentley really hasn't had any training. He's mostly a lap dog. The only thing he does know how to do is sit. Bentley's personality is happy-go-lucky. He just goes with the flow. When Bentley goes on a walk, he's preoccupied with everything else around him. So he really doesn't pay attention to me. If he sees a bird, a squirrel, I am nowhere to be found. Zach, please help me get Bentley to pay attention to me when we walk. When you're first getting to know your dog, it's important to spend a lot of time with them, but you don't have to spend a lot of time getting their dog food and supplies. Choose your favorite brand of dog food, decide how often you want it delivered, and to make sure you love this service, Peplo is gonna give you $10 off your first three orders. I'll have a link and a coupon code in the description of this video, and thank you to Peplo for being the dog training revolution's most important partner and for sponsoring this video. I make a ton of leash walking videos, and I do it for good reason, so that regardless Regardless of the type of dog you have, you'll have the most complete resource possible to help you train your own dog. Leash walking manners are important regardless of the size of your dog, but make sure that you dedicate specific leash training sessions that don't center around your normal walks. Since Bentley and I don't have a lot of communication with one another yet, I want to work on getting his attention on me here in this indoor environment before I go outside where there's going to be way more distractions. I've got my turkey here. I'm gonna work on getting him to look at me. That looks awesome, look at that. So I've got his full attention. Having a good currency is very important. Now let me see if I can stand up and get his attention on me while I do that. Okay, look at me. Oh, nice work. So, so far so good. He'll pay attention to me when I have a treat in my hand and hold it up to my eyes here. But can I get his attention on me like this? Hey. Yes, I'll take that. Now let's see if I can get him moving around a little bit. So I'm gonna start walking back and forth here. Come on, come here. Good job, I love it. See, when you first start teaching your dog to walk on leash, you wanna make it easy for them, and you don't wanna focus on taking a long walk with lots of distractions. So it's important to ensure that you have their attention on you in a relatively distraction-free environment first. So I can easily get his attention on me while walking around inside. That's exactly where we need to be to go on to the next step. So let's head on out to the park and see how things go there. And now we're here in this crazy distracting environment. Let's give Bentley some time to get comfortable and sniff around before we ask him to pay attention to me. It's more challenging to get your dog to focus on you in new places since dogs are very smart, curious, observant animals. There's nothing wrong with your dog or your training if they seem distracted at this point in their training. Look at all these birds around here and look, he doesn't even want to eat that. If you're doing leash training and your dog won't take a treat, like I got a big old handful of turkey right here and you, you can see how Bentley doesn't even want it because the smells are overwhelming, the sights, the sounds, all of that. So especially early on in your training, don't require your dog to listen to you under such heavy distractions like this. We need to take a step back so I can really remind Bentley as to how I'd like him to behave here. We have a fair amount of distance right now between any major distractions, so it's a lot easier for me to keep his attention on me. Look at me. Look, look at me. Pay attention to me. Oh, he gave me a glance, which was actually pretty good, but I don't exactly have as much focus as I'd like, and this is what I suspected. And since he's in this foreign environment, it's really important to use something that your dog really loves to keep their attention on you. I'm gonna break out the turkey. I'm gonna hold it up just like we did before. Look at me, great job. And now look at this. Hey, Bentley, look at me. And I mean, there you can see his attention is on me all day long right now, and that's fantastic. He's smelling the corner over here. He's a little distracted by that. I mean, dogs are going to do that, right? This is a training opportunity here for me to see if I can get his attention on me while he's distracted and marking. Hey, Bentley, look at me. Yes, 
fantastic. I'm virtually rewarding every single time he pays attention to me because this is his first leash training session in an environment like this. You want to avoid pulling your dog when they're distracted like this, especially with small dogs. I mean, it's easy to do. It probably wouldn't hurt him. I mean, he's on a harness, so a gentle tug isn't the worst thing in the world, but you're not actually teaching when you do that. You want to teach your dog to think from the inside outward and reason through these situations. So you want to be able to get their attention on you voluntarily. Now let's see if we can walk back and forth. That would be a major victory in an environment like this. Yes, good job. Do you want this? Nice work. It's kind of a fine line at first between like luring your dog like this versus getting their attention on you voluntarily. So in the, in the beginning, it's kind of a combination of the two, but what we're working towards is being able to get our dogs to pay attention to us when we ask for their attention while on leash. Hey, Bentley, look at me. Oh, I hear a Canada goose in the background somewhere. And that's got his attention. He voluntarily gave me his attention right there. So I'm gonna be there to say, hey, I like that a lot. I don't mind that he's checking out the environment. What I don't want is him lunging and pulling towards a distraction. Come here. Yes, nice, good, good. He looked at me, he stopped as if to say, I'm thinking about going to you, so I really want to seize that moment to encourage Bentley to come to me while he seems to be thinking about it. I've got tension on the leash. Now let me see if I can get his attention on me while this tension exists. Hey, Bentley, look at this. Hey, it doesn't always go this smoothly, but right now I'm thrilled. So he's noticed the duck right here. Bentley, look at me. Yes. I'll tell you what, let's see if we can get a little bit closer. Although that duck looks like he's on a mission. Let's see if we can. So we're getting a little closer. Bentley wants to say, oh, right there. Major tension on the leash right now. I don't like that from a training perspective. So I'm going to attempt to get his attention on me. There's also a squirrel that's about to cross our path. So there's a squirrel, there's a, there's a duck. I don't even know if I want Bentley to see this squirrel. Oh, all right, now he sees the squirrel. Bentley, over here, look at me. Yes, good, it was just a glance. But right now, this might be proving too much for him. Yes, good job. That was wonderful. That's a really good illustration of how he's in and out, and it's a real fine line. If I were to go much closer than that, I think it might be a bit overwhelming to him. Let's walk, come on. Bentley, come on. I'll tell you what, since he's doing so well, let me see if I can do the same exact drill without treating quite as much. In other words, maybe I'll reward every other time or every third time, and let's see how effective that is. Hey, Bentley, come on. Good, come on. Good, still no reward. I've had three requests that he's honored. Come on. Good, still no reward. Come on, let's go. Good job, I'm gonna reward there because he's starting to fade off a little bit. And I'm using really small bits of turkey here about the size of a grain of rice. I don't wanna be too predictable in my rewards. I'm mixing up the rate at which I reward him to keep him guessing. And that's actually more effective sometimes than treating every single time. Right now, I'm not concerned with getting my walk done so I can get back home and get ready for work. I'm really focusing on Bentley right now, and that's key. If you have multiple dogs, it's important to teach one dog at a time before you can expect them to walk nicely together. So you have to get that real solid first. Bentley, can I have your attention? That's wonderful, you're doing great. And in reality, teaching your dog to walk nicely on leash is really a months long process because you have to get them experience in tons of different places with tons of different distractions. But with a dog like Bentley, he's gonna be around for so long that it's worth putting in the time right now. So whether your dog is five months old or five years old, get started now and have lots of fun with them. If you really wanna go the extra mile with your training, join us on Patreon and pick up a copy of my book. Subscribe for more fun dog training videos and get your dog's food automatically shipped to you from PetFlow. It'll make your life easier. Give it a shot and you'll get $10 off your first three orders. Give a thumbs up for Bentley. He did incredible today. I'll see you guys in the next video.